Uh, welcome to the Bear Show. We about to shoot the shit with an arrow. Got a lot of guests and I got a lot of questions. About to figure out every one of life's lessons. Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy Steven Bear, and we're back with the Bear Show. And uh, yeah, it's been a little, little hiatus since the last episode. If you're a loyal listener slash watcher of the program uh you probably loved and appreciated the first two episodes i put out with uh ran barnaclo and lee kimbrell before that you were probably like oh my gosh this is amazing content i love it so much i hope steven is consistent and puts out a new interview with a new comedian every single week and i hope he blows up uh man has great success and you know makes millions and still keeps a level head uh it's probably what you were thinking that's not how it went down uh yeah there has not been an episode for months and the reason for that uh it's not because i'm a bitch all right it is because I had my car stolen. That's the truth. That's the truth. Uh, but you're probably like, oh, you don't need a car to make videos. Yes, you are correct. Good for you, smarty pants. You don't need a car to make a video. But you do need the video camera that was in the trunk of my car when my car was stolen. Yeah, I am usually pretty good about getting all my gear out from the car, but uh, it was late. I forgot, okay? I also apparently forgot to lock the door. And also, apparently, I left a spare key in the center console. So (laughs) sue me. Please don't do that. Actually, I cannot handle that. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, left a key in the car. So that uh, is 100% on me. Uh, please don't feel bad for me. Please don't Venmo me a thousand dollars, Stephen Bear Dash Two on Venmo. Don't do that. Please don't do that. That would be terrible. Can't feel that bad for myself because it was. Definitely my fault. Tip of the cap to the guy who stole my car. It was a brazen act, uh, but he didn't hesitate. Confidently usurped the car, and that was that. Called the cops. They came, sent a pencil pusher my way to try to do their due diligence. Shout out the Cincinnati police. Um, But I, I guess they've gotten busy with other things lately because... uh. I haven't heard squat from them. They have not had any meaningful impact in their investigation. But who knows? Who knows? Maybe they're fast on the case. I don't think so, though. I don't think so. So I've kind of begun to adjust to a life of no car. And uh, it's fine. I like walking, taking a lot of Ubers, which sucks. But it is nice, you know, I've been talking to a lot of, like, uh, Native African people. I was talking to this guy who's giving me an Uber. He said he's making, last year he made $90,000 driving Uber. Uh, He's probably doing, like, 20 hours a day. Not uh, the healthiest on the back, I assume. But he had a wedding coming up, and, like, you know, African people, they need to buy, like, a goat for the the in-laws so that guy was getting his goat money that guy is the goat he is the goat so yeah i've been able to have some good uh good conversations with my uber drivers so that's definitely been a uh, a benefit and a, a blessing of having my car stolen the fact that my gear was in the back that was a real real bummer because uh you know i'm trying to make my way through this world as a 
freelance video production guy, you know? But when you don't have a car, well, no, when you don't have a camera, you can't make videos. You can make videos without a car. I don't think anyone would dispute that. You can do that. Uh, and that's what I'm doing now. No car here, but we got the camera. Bought the camera about a month or so ago. So I had to get a job because uh, I'm a blue collar guy, okay? I'm just salt to the earth, working class guy, slinging packies, just doing what I got to do to uh, keep the lights on, brother. Because, uh, yeah, no one, no one was lining up to buy me a new car, buy me a new gear. Maybe I could have asked. Maybe I could have asked someone if they would like to do that for me. I guess I'll put it out there for you guys. If anyone would like to buy me things and give me money, that is always an option. Always feel free to do that. Uh, but now, yeah, we got the camera. Bought this camera. It looks great. Just bought this light. So production's back, back and running. Uh, we've been doing stand-up. I've been hitting the mics, doing shows all the time. <laughs> Not really. No one books me for shit because they're scared that I'll bury everyone. Probably. Have been producing this podcast with with Ran, Barnaclo, and Blake Hammond. Ran so far with Blake. It's been pretty cool. Uh, it's fun working with those guys, even though they're freaking so mean to me. You'll listen and you'll be like, wow, they are not fair to Steven, he's such a good guy and such a great producer. They should treat him with more respect overall is what you will think uh, when you listen to Ran So Far with Blake. Check it out. Check it out. But I'm not plugging anyone else's podcast other than mine right now here because we're, we're doing this right now. This is the solo pod. First solo pod of the bear show. Yeah. What did I want to talk about? I mean, I got a lot of uh, pent up rage that I have been withholding for the past 25 or so years. You know, I'm a real I'm a smiley guy. I'm a happy guy. And I'm uh, honestly, I think I'm a bit of a people pleaser. At least if, if you guys think so. I mean, whatever makes you comfortable. Um, fuck. See, there I go again. Trying to please you. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm trying to please you guys with this, uh, this wonderful podcast episode. I guess I'm trying to please myself, too, in like a non-sexual way. I'm Captain Ahab, you know, trying to find... What was the whale's name? Moby Dick. I'm trying to trying to get the dick, man. I'm trying to follow my dreams, baby, cuz that's what it's all about. You know, we don't have much time here on this celestial orb. Yeah, I enjoy doing stand up. I want to keep on doing that and want to start getting loose-lipped here on this podcast. I want to talk shit about everyone who's ever done me wrong. You know who you are. You know who you are. Trying to just not be so stuck in my head about putting myself out there, putting stuff out there. You got the aspirations and you got the ideas. And if you don't execute them, by God, you'll frustrate yourself. It's a difficult thing to uh, to rally, especially when, uh, you know, an unfortunate turn occurs. Like you get your car stolen, for example. But, you know, you could moan and groan and and bitch about how the Cincinnati police is a ineffective bureaucracy that won't help you find your fucking car. Or you could just be like, hey, this shitty thing happened. And instead of allowing it to crush you, just allow it to be a galvanizer to uh, allow yourself to prove to yourself and the world that you cannot be stopped by any unfortunate event. It's kind of how I've framed the thing. Like, this was supposed to happen. Why, though? Why was this supposed to happen? I don't think it was supposed to happen. I think I left my key in the car, and then I got my car stolen. The reason that it happened 
is because I am a dumbass. And I got to own that. I got to own that. Gosh, it's hard to own that. Ah. Because, you know, I've read a book before. I'm an intellectual powerhouse is what I'd like to think. But then you get to the fact of the matter that you left your key in the car. And it's hard to, you know, hold those two things uh, at once. Being an intellectual powerhouse and also being a dumbass. It's one of the many uh, incongruities of life. But, uh... It's all good, man. We we got this mic coming up later tonight. I've been feeling good. Been feeling good on stage. Feeling a little bit more confident in my ability as a stand-up. I don't know if other people are feeling more confident in my ability as a stand-up. I certainly would like them to feel that way because then they would put me on more shows. That is their decision to not put me on a show. Honestly, they probably don't even consider me when they're booking a show, which is part of the problem. I need to make them consider me more. Maybe I'll start driving by the homes of the people that book these shows and, you know, stand outside their bedroom window. So when they're considering, you know, deep at night in their beds, who they might want to put on their their one wonderful uh, comedy showcase and then they they open their eyes and I'm standing outside their window hovering over their their semi unconscious body and then they see me and it's like oh Steven Bear that's who we should put on the show he's awesome he's awesome he's always there even at my home late at night he's there so you're not owed anything in this game this this stand-up comedy game even if you're a fucking handsome funny guy a cool handsome funny guy like me you're not owed anything uh and that's just the way it is you know you're not owed anything by the cincinnati police you're not owed anything by your former employer. Actually, no, he does owe me $500. I take that back. Your former employer does owe you 500 bucks. But in terms of the comedy community, there's a million people trying to do the thing. But yeah, dude, it's, uh, it's a grind. It's a grind. And I'm out here grinding. I'm out here grinding like it's the 2014 homecoming dance at... Riverside Brookfield High School. Shout out my Bulldogs. What's up? A lot has changed since then. I got a better handle on my erections now. At the time, those bad boys were hard to uh, keep under control. I was getting a lot of of unintended bones throughout being uh, in the public school. I I, I did not graduate from public school from from rbhs high school i was homeschooled and that is honestly probably the reason that all these bad things have happened to me because uh i was an unsocialized little freak growing up i was homeschooled full-time through eighth grade and then in high school started going to classes around other girls that weren't my sisters and dude holy crap i should not have worn gym shorts my first day at high school jeez jeez i had to tuck that boy up it's a miracle that like my shirt didn't get lifted up because you would have just seen you would have seen that you would have seen that if you were there on August 14th, 2011. That was my first day going to high school. Oh my gosh, I was sweating so hard. Sweating so hard. Boned up so hard. I was shaking because all the blood had gone to my wiener. There wasn't enough blood in the rest of my body. So I was just like basically seizing. Yeah. 
And you guys needed to know that. All right. Well, this has been it. This has been the Stephen Bear Show solo episode. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed listening. Uh, in the future, more comedian friends on the show. Also, sometimes it will just be me just talking shit. Yeah. So come on back to the Bear Show and join me on the ride of a lifetime where I go from bitch-ass open micer to sick-ass headliner who everyone loves and everyone wants to book.